Sexy time. It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. We'll know in a very short period of time, but it looks like it could be something that will be uh, not good. Believe me, not good. Um, so, uh, you know, I see issue with yeah, that. And okay, again, you're, hey, 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 hey. Uh, you're not going to be able to insult your way to the presidency. That's not going to happen. I don't know who created Pokemon Go. Go. But I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. I'm Ted Cruz, and my pronoun is kiss my ass. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these hey, wires, hey, hey, hey. what we need to do <laughs> to create these we will jobs. Not get 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 America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him in uh, foot, foot. Uh, Not good. Believe me, not good. Hello, dissidents. Good afternoon. Welcome one and all to a Tuesday springtime matinee edition of the Do Dissidents podcast. Keaton Weiss here with Russell Dobular. Hola, mis amigos y mis amigas. There you go. Thank you all very much for being here on this lovely spring day. It is really nice and warm here it's in the Northeast. It's very beautiful finally. here, too. It's been yes. pretty chilly until today. Looks like it. Looks like it's uh, the sun is out in L.A. Uh, we have uh, I- quite the week this week, obviously. We're on today uh, at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Russ is back hosting the Jimmy Dore Show. We have Matt Taibbi on as our guest tomorrow. That's going to be a lot of fun. I will be over on Rumble. Wednesday's Rumble Day. I'll be hosting a Rumble-exclusive stream with our friend Kit Cabello from Heartlands Media. We'll be in Russell's chair for that show since Russell will be prepping the JD show. Um, and then Thursday morning, just a little note, Thursday morning, we're going to be welcoming old friend of the show, Matthew Ho, back to the program. Very excited about that. Matthew Ho recently spoke at the UN. A court recently ruled that the Democratic Party tried to illegally remove him from the state ballot in North Carolina last cycle. And he is actually going to Turkey uh, to do volunteer work uh, to help with the Gaza refugees. So Matt is, as we say in the business, a real one. And uh, looking forward to talking to him again. I do have a prior commitment, meaning prior to when we switch from the Fridays to Thursdays. So that will be a slightly abridged show. That's going to be like a 90-minute program uh, that's going to start right on time at 9 a.m. So we will do the countdown 10 minutes early and be at the program 9 a.m. Some of you think we should do that all the time. I like the countdown being a nice file-in period. I consider that part of the show. You get here, you chill out, sure, take a yeah, break, exactly. listen to some music, get in the mood, say hello room. to your friends in the chat. Right, exactly. But we're going to start that process early on Thursday. So Thursday morning, 9 a.m., we're going to start the show right on time because we've got to be wrapped by about 1030. So yep. that's what's going on this week. Russell, what's going on over there? Uh, so I actually got preview tickets to Civil War. So I will have a review out before just about anybody else. Um, and also bonus. Okay. So the Grumman's Chinese theater, it's one of those, like, it's not a major bucket list thing, but like, you know, to see a movie at Grumman's Chinese, what I didn't realize is they have a whole modern movie theater upstairs, but then there's the theater you think of that has the handprints and the footprints outside that premieres take place in. It's a big, they've modernized it into an IMAX theater. The trick is theater seven. That's that theater. Any of the others are going to be in the upstairs modern place that who gives a shit. You could go to any movie theater for that. So Civil War, Theater 7, I got tickets for the preview. So that is how I'm spending my day. That's right. And then Russell will have a review for us on Thursday. Unfortunately, I can't see it on Thursday because it's not playing up here in the boonies uh, until Thursday. So we won't have that ready for Thursday morning. But Russell will have an early review of the new uh, Civil War movie uh, yeah, this Thursday. I'm, not, I'm expecting it to be pretty laughable. Like, I'm not expecting it to be good, but I'm definitely expecting it to be a cultural moment. Like, everyone's going to be debating the meaning of that movie. 
Uh, you know, it might be good. You know, Alex Garland is doing it. He made um, Ex Machina. He made that pretty cool movie, Annihilation. Ex was very good. Annihilation with Natalie Portman. That was what a pretty cool one, too. What makes me skeptical of it is his premise. Like, California and Texas succeed together? It doesn't make any sense culturally. Yeah, but it's that might be part of what makes it cool because the predictable lib thing to do would be to separate California and Texas. Maybe there's a reason why they're fighting on the same side. That, Don't that's best case scenario. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. best case scenario that it's almost like parallel universe. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, folks, um, we got a great show to get to today, and we have a very busy man who's hard at work campaigning for Congress, who is uh, uh, in on. the. Hang on, before we bring him in. Oh yeah. Or maybe we right. should bring him in for this. Should bring him in to do some headbanging, man, with that hair. Do the headbanging first. You think? Yeah, because it's going to be a pain in the ass to edit around it for the clip. <laughs> <laughs> I That's think you I are think. denying Jose his moment. All right, his fine. Moment to headbang. Jose, do you want to headbang? Yes or no? Give me a thumbs up if you want. He's shrugging his shoulders. All right, okay. he says yes, he'll do it. All right, you all know who Jose yeah. Vega is, everybody. Hey, Jose, what's going on? I'm not on? literally going to headbang. I'm not headbanging. I'm not. I mean, I'm here, but I'm not going to. You know, whatever. Yeah, so. I'm not going to either, but that's why I asked. All right, right. right. Oh, you, I'm you trying just to lost a... 50 votes, not headbanging. Yeah, We're right. trying to help like, you here, I'm trying man. to be a, a serious congressional candidate here. and uh... We have an enormous <laughs> uh, headbanging contingent. Yeah, that's We're actually true. talking about forming it as a party. They're more Midwesterners, <laughs> though, than New Yorkers, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but as you can see, Jose's running for Congress as an independent against Richie Torres. You guys all know that about our friend Jose. So, uh, Jose, thank you for being here uh, today. Uh, we appreciate it. We won't take much of your time because we know you are busy. But we want to first plug uh, your workshops uh, for volunteers. So you are now soliciting volunteers um, because the big push for ballot access begins uh, on April 16th, and you only have about six weeks to get how many signatures do you need? First of all, just let us know what the deal is with that. Well, sure. I mean, I have six weeks, that's true, to get 3,500 signatures. What that actually means is I need 3,500 valid signatures because our opposition can challenge our signatures. They can say, I can't read the handwriting. They can look at every person and say, that person's actually not registered to vote. That person doesn't exist, whatever, and they can knock off our signatures. So we need three times the numbers of signatures. I want to get 10,000 signatures in 10 days. I want to not have to worry about the fact that I can uh, I can have uh, I can be on the ballot after 10 days. So I want to be done by April 26th. Why? Because if we prolong it any longer, they're going to sabotage us. They're going to do things to us. They're going to do whatever they can. We need to be quicker than they can be quicker. OK, we need to be like we need to just sucker punch them. That's the way to do it. We need to organize quicker than they can than they can organize. I have a team of people ready to clerk our entire petitions, run through the validity list. So if you want to be a part of history, go to votevega.nyc and then there's a button there. You just hit volunteer and it takes you right to the sign up page. Just hit petition. If you're in New York City, New Jersey, Connecticut, honestly, I have somebody flying in from, I think, like, Ohio or something he, like he's already booked his ticket he's coming and I said all right well yeah and he's doing it all himself so I mean that's how serious people are because this is our chance to say fuck you to Richie Torres this is our chance to stick it in the face of Israel of ID of the IDF of the ADL and actually show the world that the Bronx is ready for an alternative that's why I want to blow the signatures out of the water I don't want to just go for the minimum I want to blow it out of the water yeah, and uh, folks in the audience, your friendly neighborhood dissidents uh, are going to be out helping Jose. Uh, we're going to be pounding the pavement on April 20th. Uh, we will be meeting for anyone who wants to join us in the New York area. If you want to come meet your favorite JOOs and Jose and help pound the pavement and get some signatures, we're going to meet at the Mario Marola Courthouse that is right up the block from Yankee Stadium Saturday April 20th, we will be meeting there at 10 a.m. That's when we will be starting. So we hope you guys can get there a few minutes early. We'll be there as early as 930. I know I will. Uh, that is at 851 Grand Concourse, Bronx, New York. You just take the subway if you're in the uh, New York area to Yankee Stadium. That's its own subway. 
Yankee Stadium is also its own uh, Metro North train stop. So if you're coming from the Hudson Valley, as I will be that day, um, you can get off the train right there, and it's a quick walk over to the courthouse. For those of you guys who are Yankee fans, the old Yankee Stadium, that courthouse used to be visible from over the wall. Um, so it's a pretty iconic Bronx building. Big, tall building. Can't miss it. 851 Grand Concourse. Uh, we'll be stepping off at 10. Try and make it there a few minutes early, but that'll, that is Saturday, April 20th, 10 a.m. at the Grand Concourse. We are promising the funnest wildest campaign since hunter thompson ran for sheriff of woody creek on the freak <laughs> power ticket and you will also be there if you come there that day you'll be there to witness only the fourth time me and keaton have met in person that's right and that's only right. the third time that we actually spend time together that's the, right the second time he just came dropped something off and left right i dropped that's off a, a microphone and a curtain that he, he just used handed once me something he said yeah. all right very good then all right and very good it. I'm that double parked. I got to go. Yeah, that was it. Uh, uh, but I want <laughs> like to flesh 30 out. Seconds. I want to flesh out what you're saying, Jose, about the challenges to ballot access for third parties. So this story was in the New York Times from March 20th. Democrats prepare aggressive counter to third party threats. An army of lawyers aims to challenge the steadily advancing ballot access efforts of independent candidates who Democrats fear could peel votes away in swing states. So this article focused most, mostly on the presidential candidates, but of course, the same hurdles apply to third-party down-ballot candidates as well. So here's a taste of what Jose is up against. The Democratic Party, increasingly alarmed by the potential for third-party candidates to swing the election to former President Donald J. Trump, has put together a new team of lawyers aimed at tracking the threat, especially in key battleground states. The effort comes as challengers, including the independent candidates RFK Jr. and Cornell West, plus groups like No Labels as well as the Green Party, have ramped up their push to qualify for states' ballots ahead of critical deadlines in the spring and summer. Note, since the publication of this article, No Labels has withdrawn from the 2024 race. They will not be running anybody. Okay, that was not true at the time this was printed, but it's true now. The legal offensive, led by Dana Remus, who until 2022 served as President Biden's White House counsel, and Robert Lenhard, an outside lawyer for the party, will be aided by a communications team dedicated to countering candidates who Democrats fear could play spoiler to Mr. Biden. It amounts to a kind of legal whack-a-mole, a state-by-state -state counterinsurgency plan ahead of an election that could hinge on just a few thousand votes in swing states. The aim is to ensure all the candidates are playing by the rules and to seek to hold them accountable when they are not, Mr. Leonard said. Third-party candidates have haunted Democrats in recent presidential elections. Ralph Nader is widely faulted for costing Al Gore the White House in 2000, and some in the party have argued that Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate, drew votes from Hillary Clinton in 2016. In swing states, she narrowly lost to Mr. Trump. There was little third-party activity in 2020, and it's unclear what effect the possible presence of such candidates on the ballot this year would have. But fears among Democrats are particularly acute this year, with polls suggesting that Mr. Trump's base of support is much more fixed than Mr. Biden's, meaning it's possible that some of the president's voters could be open to an alternative. Gaining access to the presidential ballot is a complicated and expensive process for candidates, particularly for those not affiliated with a party, even a minor one. Laws vary from state to state, with some requiring merely a fee or a few thousand signatures, and others requiring tens of thousands of signatures gathered under tight deadline pressure, along with other administrative hurdles. State rules limiting ballot access ensure that the people who are on the ballot have legitimate bases of support, and it's not simply a vanity project, Mr. Leonard said. Independent candidates and third-party leadership see restrictive ballot laws and efforts to monitor and enforce them as anti-democratic, exemplifying the kind of two-party political machinations they say they are trying to combat. What are ballot access barriers? They are barriers against free speech, said Mr. Nader, who has made four third-party runs for president. He describes state ballot laws in the U.S. as the worst in the Western world by orders of magnitude. Gauging the popularity of third-party and independent candidates is a challenge for pollsters. If they aren't listed in a poll, their support, of course, goes uncounted. But when a poll does include them, the results tend to drastically overestimate their support, data shows. What polling does make clear is that a sizable block of American voters are not excited about either Biden or Trump. 
Now, that article focused on the fact that Democrats are lawyering up to keep third-party candidates off the ballot. And this piece, which we're going to read a very brief snippet from, singles in on New York. So this is Spectrum and why ballot access a challenge for third party independent presidential candidates in New York. As New York state presidential primaries wrapped up with the predicted victories for Biden and Trump, many voters have expressed dissatisfaction with the rematch. Changes made in 2020 have made it increasingly difficult for many third party presidential candidates to appear on the ballot in New York state, limiting the prospect of alternatives. As it stands, only four political parties can appear on the ballot, Democratic, Republican, conservative, and working families. So it seems the Greens have not even qualified in New York as of this writing. Nominees from any other party and unaffiliated individuals must run as an independent. For candidates like RFK Jr., that means a process that includes gathering 45,000 signatures on a petition to get on the ballot, triple the previous requirement, or 1% of the total vote in the most recent gubernatorial election, whichever is less. That's in addition to other procedural requirements. Now, like I said, these pieces focus more on the presidential side, but these same hurdles exist for candidates like Jose, as evidenced by this photograph right here. As you can see, it's a pretty exhausting process figuring out how to get on these ballots. Jose tweets the realities of running a congressional campaign. I'm putting everything into this campaign. Richie Torres must be held accountable for his unequivocal support for genocide. So, Jose, you, first of all, you are putting everything into this campaign. You have quit your job and you are doing this full time. Is that correct? That's exactly right. I came to that decision on Easter weekend, actually, where I decided to quit my job. Um, I guess, uh, you know, that was my Garden of Yosemite moment where I realized, like, the world is collapsing. I'm in a unique position as a congressional candidate to do something about it, but also running against one and of the you, most you also declined an offer from Tyson to move to Tennessee to work in their plant, right? <laughs> what? You, you, like, we, you have these like niche jokes that like, <laughs> does your audience get that? I don't get that. <laughs> if, if they if they watched our coverage, yes, they did. Tyson did a job fair in New York trying to get people to go work in their plants in Tennessee. Well, Okay, I'm going to I, I thought I? you were a regular viewer. <laughs> did, you, did you see the last picture that Keaton put up? Yeah, he's been big. I stopped I my yeah, and like, enough, wait, everyone, wait, wait, do dissidents is live right now. Let's just like <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> hang on. But around the campaign office, when you're working yourselves to death, that's not the official podcast of the campaign. You know what? You it know, will have be it now. on in the background. Hey. We no. will now. Like you're, you're, yeah, you're the one we go to, right? It's like, what's the breaking news? What, what did, what did Keaton Weiss and That's Russell Doubler say? What did they, get, get their quotes right now. We need to know what we need to say on this issue. Um, we, we have a <laughs> network of spies around the world. To, 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 to bring it back on a serious note. Yes, I quit my job. I realized everything is collapsing in the country and around the world, and we are on the precipice of a nuclear war. Richie Torres is deeply unpopular. I need to put everything I can into this campaign. And I need the campaign to be a conduit for other people who are looking to intervene on world history. So this is a movement we're building. This goes beyond campaign. You know why? Because Gaza can't wait until November. You just can't. So this is the way to move forward with everyone. I've been reading Rosa Luxemburg. I don't know if people are familiar with Rosa Luxemburg and the Junius pamphlet, but she says here, the working class can boldly look truth straight in the face. Even the bitterest self-renunciation for its weaknesses are only confusion. The strict law of history gives back its power, stands guarantee for its final victory. Like we can actually do this. We can actually do something here that is potent OK, something that can actually stop not just this genocide, but all kinds of genocide. As Rosa Luxemburg continues, she says, you know, it is foolish and mad to imagine that we only need survive the war like a rabbit waiting out the storm under a bush in order to fall happily back into the old routine once it's over. That's done. OK, this has changed everything right now. It's the matter of like, are we going to move forward beyond imperialism or are we going to fall into world destruction? Because that's that's our only two options right now. You know, it's it's total destruction or 
or or moving forward, moving forward towards development for something that can actually be potent and freeing for all so that nobody has to be poor anymore and people can actually have three meals a day. And that's what I'm committing my life to right now. That is what I am committing. It's not about winning. It's not about a congressional campaign. It's a movement that I am committing to and starting right here, right now. If people want me to win, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to put everything into this as much as I am or to what extent you can? Because that's what it's going to take. And it's going to take the people deciding to take their government back. That's why I'm doing this. And that's why I need you to come out and petition with us on Saturday, on uh, April 20th. Because if we can get all these signatures within 10 days, that opens the door for a whole lot of things. It'll show optimism and excitement. And it'll show that Richie Torres has a real challenger. Actually, this is the beginning of the campaign. This moment, this petitioning is the beginning. Okay, everything was just lead up to this. If we do this, this summer is going to be explosive. And I guarantee we'll have like some big barbecue or something at the end of it, you know, as like a in the summer, you know, in the summer night. So, well, I yeah. want to be clear, too, because we're going to be down there on the 20th. And we hope whoever is in the New York area can come and join us. But the period actually begins one week from today, yes. the 16th. Yes. Yep. And you have about six weeks, right? It's from the 16th to the 31st is when you have to get 3,500 signatures that the Democratic lawyers deem valid enough uh, to the yes. point where you can be on the ballot in November. So mm -hmm. to be clear, this is an independent campaign. This is not a Democratic primary campaign. It's very important. We would not be supporting it if it were a Democratic primary campaign. Um, and uh, number two, nope. because New York is the most corrupt state for this kind of shit in America, they only give you six weeks to get the signatures. Like, he couldn't start in February. Right. He has to get it all they, within they a week. They try to make it as difficult as possible. They try to make it like a saw trap for <laughs> candidates. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, you yeah. have to pull out the key and cut off your foot and get through the barbed wire, and then you can be a candidate. Um, but really, this feels like the first real campaign of what is becoming kind of this post-Bernie Sanders, post-duopoly left. And I think particularly because Richie Torres is so despised, this candidacy has a lot of potential to become extremely visible. As, as somebody who was out there campaigning for AOC when nobody know, knew who she was and everybody thought it was a joke, now that didn't end well, but I know Jose personally. So if he goes all AOC, I'm going to come for him. Um, oh my God. but Can you imagine right that, now, that well, he can't that, because, uh, well, you're not, but the thing is like structurally, I'm confident that won't happen. Even well, if I didn't yeah, know because Jose, he's because you're not a Democrat. Right. That's you're why a Democrat a, is a, is a deal breaker. But remember that started, she was, she was still bartending when I was volunteering for her. Nobody, nobody took that campaign seriously and look where it went. Look how big that got. Look how visible. And Joe Crowley. Nobody knew Joe Crowley. People know who Richie Torres is. You got Richie Torres, one of the biggest scumbags in Congress, much despised, still continuing to defend a genocide even as it's ongoing. So you get a serious challenger to him like this who's going to get a lot of support from independent media. Jimmy is coming out and doing a fundraiser. We're going to be there on the 6th. Um, so this could blow up oh, into something confirmed? very. You guys, you guys are coming on the sixth. Of course, yeah, I told you. Of yeah, course, no, we're going to come on the sixth. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I'm yeah. sorry, man. I, I got to make yeah, sure. No, no for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for sure, we'll be there on the sixth. Um, yeah, and yeah, so Keith, there's Keith's a lot of. Gonna get those uh, those donuts at the Dunkin' Donuts in my name. Yeah, I'm going to get you some very expensive. <laughs> so I'm going to get you those good Harlem <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> donuts, <laughs> an assorted. <laughs> A dozen donuts from Harlem. I'll have to tell Jimmy. I'll have to warn him about that. There's going to be some overhead involved in this. Yeah, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. Um, but obviously, Jose, before we let you go, I want you to get your plugs in one more time because this is important. It's also important that if you cannot make it to New York to canvas because we have a global audience here, you can donate. So go ahead. Well, but you know what, though? I had somebody who was about to donate $500, and I told them, use that money and buy a plane ticket and get out here. And they said, you know what? I will. And they did. And they did. Oh, beautiful. Like that's, like, that's really at the level that I'm – Go first of all, go to my website and volunteer. Like hit the sign up or volunteer button there. Do that and come out and petition. If you could come out for the 10 days, 
amazing, great. If you can come out only on the 20th, that's fine too. Do what you actually can do. I also, well, I can't talk about this, but there might be something special happening in the evening of the 20th after everyone's done petitioning that people will will, will want to just sign up for it and be, um, be in touch for. And I'll let you two know personally what it is and you'll be excited. And hopefully if that gets confirmed, you're going to want to plug this again. But anyway, yeah, look, so look, I need people to go to the website, votevega.nyc and just sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, volunteer, because I need you to do a crash course. I like there, you need to be a registered voter. It doesn't matter where, whether you're out of the state or in the state, it doesn't matter. You can be a registered voter. Um, that is what makes you a witness. They're going to do all kinds of things. For example, if somebody uh, grabs your clipboard and they signs and you don't see them signing, that's illegal. Mm -hmm. That's illegal. It's uh, stupid. Interesting. So you got to, I, I got to orient you. I have to train you on a mm -hmm. Zoom call first and then we'll do something light on the day of also. But I need you to be ready to know all the tricks so that when they come for you, you can be like, hey, fuck off, Fed, you know. So, right. you know what I'm saying? So that's, no, you have uh, to dot that's, all your I's and cross all your T's. And, and that saves a ton of resources in both the short term and the long term, because every mistake you make takes time and money by extension to, to yeah. fix. And so if you learn in advance, if you go to votevega.nyc, you click the volunteer tab, you get an invite to a Zoom training session. I will take that yeah. Zoom training session before I show up on the 20th. We'll have one of us, either Russell, myself, or maybe Jose will work this out. One of us mm -hmm. will be there to give a sort of condensed version of that crash course of the day of. So that in case anybody can't do it, we will make sure that we have all of our, uh, you know, like I said, I's dotted and T's crossed. But that's going to take time. So really, if you can go and sign up and learn that in yeah. advance, this way, when you get there on April uh, 20th or before, if you're, you know, if you can make it on the 16th, do that, too. Whatever you show up, this way we know that you're you're good to go. Um, Just a couple of things. Like if you really can't sure. come out and if you can't fly out, then you're allowed to donate. Then you're allowed to give me uh, the funds to make this possible. <laughs> I, I mean it like, look, like the money is good. Believe me. If, if actually if you can fly out and donate, even better. But there you go. If you I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't go one or the other on that, Jose. Yeah. Yeah, if you could do both, you should do, do both. both. Yeah, and the max people can contribute per election cycle is thirty three hundred dollars. So I mean, if you got a spare three thousand dollars lying around, you know, I'd there be happy. I would. I will. You know. Well, that's the other thing. After the Jimmy Dore segment, we had about hundred and forty new donors, and they're, they're still oh, that in. segment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I. And like, wow, that's great. I, I have to, I have to apologize because there's probably some people here who've donated who I still haven't called back, and I'm sorry. Like, I'm still getting that's donations a lot of from that. Calls, yeah, that's yeah. A lot of calls. I'm still, still getting donations from that segment. It's been shared. That's why my, it's easier to go to Exxon and you know Shell. Just a couple of calls, right? You go, so, you go to the people. It's a lot of phone calls. Yes, exactly. So, anyway, look, that's 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 all I got to say here. Somebody here is asking. Oh, never mind. It was for Russ. They were asking if Russ was single. I thought someone was asking if I was single. I was like, yes, please, you know, come and infiltrate my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, come and infiltrate. that's a fed. That's a fed. Whoever asks if you're <laughs> single in a YouTube chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, really? they're trying to set me up for a honeypot. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm gonna, Jose, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake up next to a dead hooker. Yeah. <laughs> Always a pleasure, my friend. We will see you on the 20th. We will be in touch between now and then. Once again, folks, the website votevega.nyc. Donate and volunteer, and we will see you in the Boogie Down Bronx on the 20th, uh, hey, as man. well as whoever can make it there. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure to see you. Best of luck as Take always. Care. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, sir. Jose Vega, everybody. Round of applause for Jose in the chats. That is going to be a fun day. It's going to be a fun day. You know where we're meeting? We're not going to meet at the courthouse deli, but there's actually a pretty good sort of Jewish style deli. I don't know if it's a Jewish deli. I don't know if it's run is by there? Jews. They used to make a really good pastrami sandwich back in the day. Well, back when I used to go to Yankee games with my family when I was like a child, we would go there and eat before the games because the concession prices were crazy high in the stadium. But you could get like a good like pastrami sandwich or like a real one for at the time. Now, this was 25 years ago nine dollars <laughs> you know yeah, now you're lucky like if it's less than 20 now. right now yeah. you're lucky if it's less than 20 but it might be because this was a, a an inexpensive place so that is uh 
that is something uh, that you'll want to maybe check out there uh, when hey, you come. Throw, throw up the address us. again. Somebody's asking. Yes. Yeah, so the Where address is the courthouse at 851 Grand Concourse, Bronx, New York. So take a screenshot of this. Make sure you have that. We'll we'll plug this obviously between now and then. But that is the address. So come see us. We'll be there at 10 a.m. and we'll be putting in a day of pounding the pavement, gathering some signatures. As Russell said, this is like the first post-duopoly campaign that this movement has had a chance to really flex itself with. And it's going to be fun because we get to do this on our terms. We don't have to, don't don't say anything bad about Joe Crowley. Don't be negative about Joe Crowley. That's not allowed. We're trying to win over his voters. (laughs) Yeah, right, exactly. You don't have to worry about that shit now. So uh, that's going to be loads of fun. You know what's also going to be loads of fun, folks, is our live show. We moved some tickets uh, the last time, uh, but uh, because we moved some more tickets, uh, they are going. So dodissidents.com front slash day show gets you tickets to the day show. Dodissidents.com front slash night show gets you tickets to the night show. I bring this up today because the uh, the series finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm was on Sunday. And so Larry David did a sit-down interview with Willie Geist for NBC. Oh, yeah, you sent that to me. I saw that at like 3 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I thought I made a video clip of it, this, but I must have saved it to the wrong place. So uh, I'll show a little screen share image of this. Uh, the Producers Club, which is the venue to our live show, was the old improv. So if you're a Seinfeld fan, you know the, the improv club, the yellow marquee with the big, uh, I think it was like, black letters you said improv that was the building that is the uh producers club theater complex now and oh, so i didn't actually know that yeah and so when willie geist interviewed larry david for this you know curb your enthusiasm series finale russell this room will look familiar to you this is our room this is our venue oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah now i think this is the smaller theater this is the 50 seater right and we're in the 60s th- we're, uh, we're, we're in the 68 seat yeah so this is the small so we won't be in this exact room but this is one of the rooms that russell sculpted out this is in that complex and this was the old improv so look at that our venue got a little tv time with larry david uh this week and so that was cool so that's going to be not the exact room, but that's the kind of venue it is. You get more or less uh, a, a pretty good idea of the space. That's going to be loads of fun. So that's dodissidents.com front slash day show for the 2 p.m. matinee. Dodissidents.com front slash night show for the 7 p.m. I think we got about 20 seats left for the 7 p.m. and 25 not, left for the 2 p.m. I don't usually plug these, but we do hear from a lot of people that they were subscribed and then unsubscribed. So if you think you're subscribed... Check. Make sure. Check it out. Indeed. Thank you guys all very much for being here. We had a very generous super chat to start the day. Kenman, 140 Canadian smackers. Thank you, Kenman. That's very kind of you. Now is, it, of you. now, is this because we talked about the exchange rate on Jimmy Dore yesterday and said the Canadian should pay an extra tax? <laughs> yeah. Did you give us that number because uh, of the exchange? Had a horrible weekend. Then your show came on, and I feel better. You guys are always worth it. Well, I hope thank you, you are feeling better, and uh, thank you very much. That is very kind of you, and I hope this week is better than last for you, Kenman. Thank you very much for that. That is very kind of you. Uh, all righty. We'll take a couple more Super Chats here as we go. Isabel Jimenez. Oh, asks, is Russell taken? He's kind of cute. Is that the <laughs> thing that you read, or was that, was that what Jose read? I, I guess so. I guess that's what he saw. Um, I You know, it's complicated. It's complicated. Yeah, it's a little but up I, in the I, air. I, overall, no. No. But, uh, but you know, that's... Um, well, an answer I, like I, that I, puts I, the pressure on, does it not? I always quote Bob Fosse when his, when his daughter asked why he didn't get remarried. He said, I don't know anyone I dislike enough to inflict that kind of torture on. <laughs> I was going to say, Russell is like a ticket to our live show. Available, but not necessarily for much longer. <laughs> Hopefully not for much longer. Yes, I'll say. We will, we will see. We will yes. See. Uh, Linda Strait, make Jose the George Galloway of New York. Yeah, that's a good plan. I like that plan, Linda. Thank you very much. Abiding. Thanks for the 99 cents. Appreciate that very much. Uh, okay. China Shill. Thanks for the $2. 
Just check the comments on your JDS wage segment, and wow, he really garnered an audience of low IQ right-wing small business tyrant morons. Yeah, it could be a rough crowd over there. We love Jimmy, but it could be a rough crowd sometimes on some of those comment sections, particularly with the wage one. I can't wait till they hear my abortion take, which I'm not even going to ruin. If you miss that, <laughs> watch it. <laughs> I'm not going to even say anything because I'm expecting I'm expecting some hate mail for that one, to be honest. Uh, uh, listen, actually, I hadn't really thought about it until we did that segment because it just we never really covered it before. But it happened to come up that this wage thing happened while I was in California. It literally hit two days after I got here, the increase in the minimum wage. And yeah, it, we spend so much time because we come out of the Democrats and Democratic movements. We spend so much time critiquing the elite class that we basically rebelled against when we were trying to work a political project within that structure. Um, we don't spend a lot of time looking at what's wrong with conservatives but and very often i think we feel like that's such a baseline given for so much of our audience that we don't get into it yeah it's but not it, interesting it doesn't make for interesting material right and and as taibi said and we'll discuss when we have him on the show tomorrow in his now infamous uh, uh substack note uh hey that stuff is well covered in other sectors but actually you know what it's not true because when you get into this wage thing the elite liberals and the Jesse Waters, they're on the same page. They all want to fuck the workers. They they just pitch their trickle-down economic theories a little differently. You know, the, the libs will tell you, you know, it's really sad that we're in this global economy and, you know, it's too bad. And that's why we need some, some minimum supports in society. But if you raise wages and, you know, on the other side, they'll just say bootstraps. Bootstraps, you got to, the small business owner is going to be driven out. But you know what? It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. People have been getting on the conservative side. That's why I keep saying in regards to this, I talk more about Thomas Frank's Listen Liberal, but really the beginning of that trilogy, the first part of what I would consider a trilogy on what's gone wrong in American politics was what's the matter with Kansas. And it's all about how they took people who rightly were turned off by the liberal class contempt for rural people and working class people, particularly in the post Clinton new Democrat party where they very openly chased wall street and what they called back then the wired workers as their new party. A lot of conservative politicians serving very wealthy corporate interests, very deftly linked the feeling of rightful grievance towards being treated that way on cultural issues and being looked down on and they tied it to Reaganomics. So now you have all these working people who, and you know what? I have to correct myself. I keep saying this is an Eddie Murphy joke. It's actually an old Richard Pryor joke about how his grandmother would make him go out, get the stick from the backyard to beat his own ass. You have a whole working class that's been brainwashed like that. And we have been kind of, you know, some people who are against it will say, well, this is the red brown alliance. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of us have become open to working with what you would call the populist right on certain issues like war and um, certain types of corruption and freedom of speech. Of course, there's been a lot of overlap between populist left and populist right. It's easy to forget why it's not one movement. And as soon as we got into wages, it was a reminder of why it's not one movement because people on that side, the populist right, it's amazing. They're, they seem to be skeptical of everything the media ever told them, except that when workers ask for higher wages, they're being lazy bums. Like everything except Ayn Rand economics that got fed to them on Fox News, they question all of it. That one thing, they never question. It's amazing. It's amazing. And they and they need to. That, that's why as soon as I saw that vulnerability, I did a second segment on it, because uh, I think it's very important to wake people up to that. 
You know, well, we're gonna you... do one now, so this is we don't don't step on the whole thing because we have the Jesse Waters thing. We're gonna play uh, <laughs> right now. We have a third. This is a, really a fourth, right? Hey, this hey, is our hey, second. Hey, hey, let me let me tell you, it's very nice because I feel like this issue is receding into the background to be able to move away from a cultural issue like the transgender issue, which I feel some the momentum is going in the right direction now and to get into this kind of shit, the real shit, man, the fuck, I, you know, I don't want to spend all that time, uh, on that. I felt like it was important because I felt like children are being hurt and they, and they still are. And I'll still do a segment about that every now and then, but yes, mass incarceration, modern day slavery through mass incarceration, uh, wages, unfair income distribution, um, this is the stuff I would much rather be spending our time on. All right. Well, let's get into it. Uh, Jesse Waters, uh, Fox News understudy to Tucker Carlson, who got demoted when Tucker Carlson uh, got fired. Uh, he is now the uh, sort of main primetime uh, anchor, if you will, uh, on Fox News. Uh, he got invited to the Patrick Bet David podcast over on Valuetainment to hawk his book uh and talk a little bit about these minimum wage increases in california now we did a segment on patrick beth david way back about the ups workers where yeah, he was like can, right. can you believe that the ups workers yeah. they get a 45 dollars an hour <laughs> yeah uh which of course was not the starting wage but anyway right. uh yes. here is yes. jesse waters talking about how crazy it is crazy it is that two people in a household if they each work fast food might get to live a somewhat comfortable life Making twenty dollars an hour to work at a fast food restaurant, right? Is that is that six figures? Are you making no, six, no, making no, 40, 40 grand. 50, forty grand? Fifty is just two exit <laughs> two and out a few zeros. Yeah. Okay, so forty k a year, okay, full time, forty k a year. Yeah. So and then if your husband or wife is also there, you're making a hundred thousand dollars as a family. Sure, but no, no, that's that's not right. Twenty dollars an hour. This this idiot, <laughs> this idiot doesn't even know the $20 an hour is not a six figure salary. Why are you talking about this? Yeah. You don't even know the the first thing about the subject. Well, he got it wrong too and he said, "Well, if if both husband and wife work McDonald's for $20 an hour, that's six figures." No, that's still only 80 grand. $20 an hour is 40 grand a year. That's how that works out. I know because I used to work for $20 an hour. That's $40,000 a year. After taxes, that's about $34,000 a year. So a husband and wife working at now minimum wage fast food over on the west coast there good old california sixty eight thousand dollars a year after tax income now that is nowhere near a comfortable middle class life in fucking california no. where no. gas is Here? over five dollars a gallon yeah. and housing and you can't is get unbelievable. without driving you have to drive gas is through the roof housing is unbelievably expensive out there I know because we were actually considering briefly to maybe move out there because my wife could, you know, her, her certification is uh, worldwide, so we could live anywhere. And we have a lot of family out there who we like a lot. So we're looking at housing. We're like, I guess we can't do it out there, you know, not on $30 an hour. So you're telling me right, they're going to live right. high on the hog at $20 an hour, 68 grand a year for a household income in California. He thinks that's crazy. Watch this. That's crazy. If your husband or wife is also there, you're making a hundred thousand dollars as a family. Sure. Both working at McDonald's. Eighty yes. grand. Uh, th that is okay. That's yeah, eighty grand. See, somebody could do math there. Eighty grand. Yes. That's pre-tax. Post-tax, right. it's about sixty-eight grand, as I said. Crazy. Right. right. That crazy. is crazy. Crazy. Because that job really doesn't require much. So it's inflating the entire. Uh -huh. Let me um, see. You know, uh, Let me see Jesse Waters do that fucking job for two days. Yeah. For two days. It doesn't require much. He's never had a job like that. He doesn't know what that's about. If you talk to anyone who's worked fast food, that is actually a pretty grueling job. Keaton, you worked fast food, didn't you? I worked Pizza Hut, not fast food, but same type of thing. Yeah. No, you're on your feet all day, hot kitchen all day, always something to do. If you're not cooking, you're sweeping the floor. If you're not sweeping right. the floor, you're checking out a customer, right? If you're you know, getting the dishes and the pans washed and shit like that. No. It's fast paced. It's a lot harder than what he does. Absolutely well, harder. Well, of course it is. And here's where you see your class bias again, because relative to sitting on your ass in an office, it's actually a very hard job. And Waters would probably not come on and complain 
about office workers getting 40,000 a year. It, no. this, this, this is a hatred of workers and you can expect it from a millionaire talk show host like Jesse Waters. What hurts me is working people who have been taught to hate themselves and to hate their class so much that they would take what a fucking piece of shit like this has to say about wages seriously. And as we have discovered, there are a lot of people like that in the audience of alternative media. That is crazy because that job really doesn't require much. So it's inflating the entire, mm -hmm. you know, uh, labor sector. And, and the happy meal. And the happy meal. Unhappy, which, very which, unhappy. Which meal. I'm very unhappy about. But it's inflating the happy meal by a quarter, if anything. It's not infl it's inflating well, well, not the labor only sector. That, it doesn't. It doesn't have to. McDonald's made a hundred and five fucking billion dollars last year. It does not need to. They put half that money into stock buybacks. The money is there. The money is there. They just don't want to give it to workers. And I've seen comments. Well, but the Democrats caused inflation. No, they did not. No, they did not. They want to convince you that give, put, making things a little better for working people with some of the uh, some of the programs during COVID caused this inflation. But if you look at the companies, they're making record profits. They're making record profits. They didn't increase the prices because of money that flowed into the economy. They raised the prices because they used the crisis as a cover to do what they wanted. Oh, well, supply chain. Oh, yeah, you know, it's COVID. We have to raise the prices. Okay, so no supply chain problem now. Did they bring them back down? No. They are trying to extract wealth from you. That's it. It's not that the money's not there. It's that it has all been sucked up to the upper 10% and specifically the upper 1%. It is a, Warren Buffett said it himself, Sure, there's a class war, and my side is winning it. Well, the only reason you would think it's crazy for someone to be able to live on a fast food salary is because you have been conditioned, not just by the media, but by the society writ large, that people who work fast food are either 14-year-olds working their first job, which is not true. In fact, two-thirds of minimum wage workers are fully grown women. So you want to empower women? 26-year-old women are the minimum average wage. fast food worker. Exactly. And um, that they should get to live a decent life. And again, in California, I don't even know how you live a decent life. Maybe you live a dignified life for 68 grand. Even that's hard. Housing is unbelievable out there. Gas is unbelievable out there. So you are, you are far from comfortable at 68 grand a year for a two-person household out there. But the idea that you are not sweating bullets over every single rent check you write or every every single gas bill you have right, to pay, right. the fact that you can do that on one salary is alien to us because we have been conditioned to assume that if you work fast food, you don't just work one job. You work at least one and a half, if not two full-time right, jobs. Right. Jose's mom, he said in the in the film that we made about him, when he was growing up, he never saw her. She worked Dunkin' Donuts and she worked Marshalls. Two full-time jobs. She was never around. That we have been conditioned, and Jose is not a child, but and you know, he couldn't even get younger. us a deal on the he's Dunkin' Donuts. Donuts for the shoot. Yeah, we couldn't even get a box of Joe and a, a dozen donuts for less than forty-two dollars, even though his mom had the hookup way back when. But this has been, you know, that was about twenty years ago, right? Or no, maybe not then. Maybe about twelve years ago. I'm giving Jose. I'm thinking Jose's mid thirties. He's mid twenties. Young, fiery kid. Yeah, he's twenty-five. Um, yeah, but point is, like. We just assume that no one who works those jobs is worthy of a decent life because exactly. that has just been the norm. Exactly. That is just right. the norm. And right. the reason Jesse Waters thinks it's crazy is partly because he gets paid to parrot that kind of bullshit on Fox That's News. That's it. But also because he is as brainwashed as most people are, really. I mean, Jesse Waters is not a deep thinker, right? Uh, and so he probably buys into it as much as he sells it. Yeah, it, 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 it just reminds me watching. We were talking about this uh, offline. Yeah, Jesse Waters is like a pure distilled version of the whole Fox News brand. Just smarmy contempt for just just nonsense. I, I, I remember, look, we're not Obama fans here. 
But when you would watch Fox News when Obama was president, it was just absurd. Yeah, so Barack Obama today ate a sandwich. Oh, did he? Did he have mayonnaise on it? Oh, he did. He did. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Well, they called Obama a socialist. I mean, that just shows you how how indoctrinated people have become in this country, that Barack Obama, a self-described Rockefeller Republican, he referred to himself as basically that, um, could be— that, that he was basically as, a Reaganite. Yeah, he was painted as a revolutionary socialist by, by Fox News. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, this is why you have so many people. We've never been ratioed. Um, which I find disappointing. I, we got to try harder. Yeah. Uh, the closest we ever came to getting ratioed was our minimum wage segment. That tells me there's a lot of people out there who have a peasant mentality. People talk about decolonize your mind. People need to depeasantize their minds. They think like fucking peasants. You you look at these scumbags. Like Jesse Waters, who thinks twenty dollars an hour is a six-figure salary, <laughs> has to be corrected by Patrick Bet Davis. Um, and you're gonna look at this guy, and you're gonna take what he has to say seriously. You are a if that's you, if that describes you, you are a fucking peasant. You don't have to be a peasant, but you need to deprogram yourself. And most people, most of the people I encounter who are gonna scream about workers getting higher wages are the same people who do not believe a single other thing the media tells them. They don't believe the jab. They don't believe the the war propaganda. For some reason, when fabulously wealthy conservative hosts and fabulously wealthy corporations tell them that workers shouldn't ask for more wages because that's what causes inflation, it never occurs to them to look at the stock buybacks, look at the profitab profitability of these companies, and look how they are making sure. Why are they raising prices? Because they don't want to take money out of their pocket. That is how greedy these people are. That is how greedy they are. You're talking about billionaires who don't want to take a few millions off the top to pay workers. They'd rather pass it on to the consumer. So that's who you should be mad at. But you've been misdirected to get mad at your own class, to hate yourself, to get the stick, to beat your own ass. We we have got to get out of that mindset. Uh, indeed, no doubt about that. Uh, D. Wortham, I saw the total solar eclipse yesterday. Frankly, it was an awesome experience. Otherwise, keep up the good work. Thank you, D. Wortham. <laughs> yeah, we went out and uh, took a look at it, too. What do you mean, otherwise, keep up the good work? We're not like anti-eclipse. We're not no, with think, the anti-eclipse lobby. I think he just meant, you know, but, and by the way, otherwise, you know, on another note, keep up the good work. I think that's what oh, I mean. okay. Oh, okay. Uh, no. In addition. Yeah, there you go. I thought he was accusing us of being in the anti-eclipse lobby. <laughs> uh, friend, of, friend of show Tusker McGinty sent this picture. Arkansas, for whatever reason, was um, one of the most popular places to see the eclipse. It was one of the best places to see it. They got like 1.9 million people who came into the state for the eclipse. I don't know why Arkansas, but yeah, one of the you never best know. places was, to see the eclipse. It was pretty busy up here too, because there are like some parks in upstate New York that you know you could reserve a spot to go and see. We didn't do any of that. You could see it fine from from right here. But uh, yeah, it was a cool thing for sure. His Highness, thanks to the one dollar on the bus home from Eclipse Vacay. Since you guys are aficionados of six six six, you may be interested to know that during a total lunar eclipse, the moon turns blood red because of the light from the sun. That makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, I, I, I heard it was because during an eclipse, the moon fornicates with a demon. Yeah, that could be. That, that's well, that would why. be a 666-inspired uh, event for sure. Uh, let's see over here. All right. Got a lot of Rumble Rants coming in today. Jake is not here today, but I'll do my best to field all these. I might not be able to put all of them on the screen if they come in too fast, but I, I can read them. I see them on my scroll here. Um, Oh, Nocturnal Human says, I heard this news yesterday. Tennessee is getting an in and out. Still none here in Iowa. Yeah, I thought it was more of a West Coast thing. Um, but well, it, well, it is because they don't is. franchise it. Yeah. Yeah. Iowa, you guys have that world's largest uh, rest stop, though. The world's largest truck stop on uh, I-80, I believe. That's Do a that? fun place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, simping for Nicole Shanahan. You talk about RFK because he came up. Yeah, we haven't done it. I am so uninterested. 
in the whole arc. Oh, did I just delete somebody's super chat by accident? I think I did. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I'll have to try and find that later. But if uh, I don't, that is my bad. Uh, I just hit the wrong button. Um, all right. Uh, let's go on to uh, segment number three of the day. All right. Speaking of assholes, and I'll have to start this differently since I can't curse in the first 15 seconds, but Bill Maher invited Billy D. Williams on his uh, Club Random podcast. And so, uh, Russell, do you have any uh, leaked uh, backstage audio from that exchange? Well, we'll, pl- we'll play this segment first, and then, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll see what he had to say after, after uh, being exposed to Bill Maher's wisdom. There you go. All right. Russell Dobular, School of Improv. Always say no. Do it later. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay extra for those kinds of courses. All righty. Uh, <laughs> so, way, to just, way to just reach out for the ball, and then when I throw it to you, just duck. Oh. Well, that well that's uh, that that's next door to Second City. You have Third City. That's where <laughs> yeah, you get that. Third, third <laughs> that's where you get those class. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we'll save the gag for later. But uh, this is pretty funny in and of itself. Here are Bill Maher and Billy D. Williams with a combined age of about uh, three hundred and four, uh, ragging on young people today how uh, they're ignorant and weren't raised right. I don't know what this generation is all about. I don't it's, a whole, it's a whole new it's thing. Well, they're it. fragile. They're they're hot house plants. Oh, they were what ra- about misinformed? They were raised wrong. They what were about misinformed. What about not yes, having if some of it is not their fault? Raised of wrong. Course. Young people were raised wrong. I don't know. I seem to remember fairly recently a story came out where you refused to accommodate Steve O's sobriety request, even though he has been trying to lay off the booze and the weed or whatever. I don't know what exactly his addiction was. You turned down another man's sobriety request because you are not willing to go without drugs and alcohol for two hours while you record this insufferably stupid and unwatchable piece of shit show. And you're telling other people they were raised wrong? I think you were raised wrong. You're a 68-year-old man, and you can't lay off the weed for two hours so that somebody feels comfortable in their recovery being around you? And you're going to say other people were raised wrong? Sounds like Bill Maher was raised wrong. That sounds like a guy who was raised wrong in my book. Well, and and Lando actually does as this goes on. He starts to give a little pushback on it, like he starts to realize how twisted and and just get off my lawn. Bill Maher has become. He's definitely gotten worse and worse over the last ten years. He just keeps getting worse and worse and worse until it is just this absolute old man. Ah! What's with these kids these days? Uh, I, well, I don't hear really... one word of compassion from him for a generation that has just had one thing after another happen to them. You, you have 9-11, which just, I, I always say, we wound up on the wrong end of a quantum split the night of the Gore-Bush election. Nothing has ever been right in this country after that night. Um, not long after that election, you have 9-11, you have the 2008 financial crisis, you have COVID, and in my opinion, you have a technology that has created, at the very least, some serious and significant challenges to the socialization and social life of people in that generation that no other generation has ever contended with. You have no compassion for that? Nope. None at all. And you're right. 9-11, financial crisis, pandemic, those were perfectly spaced out to ruin an entire generation because they were just far enough apart where just as you were recovering from the first one, boom, you got hit with the second second one. one Boom, you got hit with the third one. Right. Exactly. Um, All right. Let's let this play. I'm not having a sense of of history. Right. No, absolutely. You're so right. They do you're not. So right. uh, Look how he slurs his words. Again, this guy's been drinking for 50 years. Oh, no, you're, you're so right. The bottle of Colt 45 in the middle well, of the table. Well, the, uh, well yeah. and, and the two old men who are completely dismissing the events that we just discussed are talking about the young people having no sense of history. Maybe right. you don't have any sense of history. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if this is your critique of the most screwed generation in America. Sitting around drinking vodka, Colt 45, and white wine in a basement. Talking yeah, about how young people are spoiled and don't have a sense of history. Know anything, but it's not their fault because 
you, you know, it's not the responsibility of the child to instruct themselves. I never had to worry about that. In my little town, whatever color it was, um, we just went to school. You went to school. So did I. They, I know. I'm just saying they taught you the, the basics. They taught you the shit. I didn't leave that school until I knew basically everything that, that like a normal, intelligent person should know. Not anything from Nobel Prize winner in literature or a science. Just a regular person would know these things. And kids today know nothing. They know you don't have to know anything, and they will sign that diploma and kick you out the door if you even finish it. It's criminal, yes. They don't know anything, but it doesn't sap their confidence in still opining on everything as if they did know something, like about Gaza, oh. stuff like that. They don't know nothing. Well, about I, still, you know, I think the 21st still? century has... Still you're ragging on them about Gaza? He, Those he kids haven't been proven not right about Gaza yet? They haven't been yes. proven right about Gaza yet because you know who thinks they were right about Gaza now? Apparently, they won't admit it because they're not big enough to. But Morning Joe is now where the kids were on Gaza six months ago. Not quite, but they are basically conceding that, yeah, I mean, this has gotten out of control. No, he, of course, is going to be the last person to admit of he was course. wrong. He never will. He'll take it to his grave. He's that much and, of an and arrogant the, and, bastard. And this is why his agents of 20 years were you know, just sitting in a room saying, how do we get rid of Bill? How do we get rid of Bill? I, you know, I don't want to have to have that conversation with him. You know what? Let's not invite him to our Oscar party. That'll probably make him quit on his own. It'll just be too much of a public humiliation. Like clearly that is what an insufferable prick this guy is that they came up with a scheme to make him leave their agency, no matter how much money he was making them. They don't th they think they, they don't know anything, but that that won't stop them from telling you all about it. Like like Gaza, what do they know about Gaza? <laughs> really? You're you're still on this, still on well, this. Well, and also this idealization of the of the public schools when he was a kid, because you know Mars older than me, but within the same kind of you know broadly speaking, like the public school system, I don't think drastically changed between when he was going through it and I was going through it. And yes, hey, I've been critical of things like the 1619 Project and gender things. I don't think that belongs in the schools. But if you want to say on the other side at that time, they were not really teaching American history in regards to slavery, in regards to women's rights, in regards to uh, gay rights, of course they weren't teaching that back then the native americans got like two paragraphs and um you know i mean that's just the history in regards to the other stuff what he's basically saying reading writing arithmetic so so what do you think they teach now uh shoplifting um transgender <laughs> swimming yeah, and uh yeah. rioting like what do you think they're teaching in school now right it's the same shit it, it, it's more or less the same shit on that like fundamental level, but no, he, he is just, uh, he, he's old. I mean, th this is old man boomerism really. I mean, I Big know time. that's a third Big rail, time. but no, uh, nuance. What, you know, exactly. absolutely no. Well, it's also, it's, it's a class thing. And that's where some of the older, uh, viewers will push back on that. And they're right. Uh, you know, they've done studies showing the reason that, the boomers that you encounter are mostly assholes like Bill Mars because the poorer ones died. Right. So you're just left with the worst examples of the cohort. Right. Who And who, whose retirements haven't been looted by nursing homes yet. Right. Yeah. Confidence and still opining on everything as if they did know something like about Gaza stuff like that. They don't know nothing. Well, about I, you know, I think the 21st century has certainly, Presented, presented some challenges that we all have to deal with right now. I mean, things have changed uh, yes. tremendously. I'm always saying that. I'm but always saying it let's... doesn't mean that it can't be corrected. Yeah, yeah, no, you guys are on the right track. He all said, right, of so... course, the 21st century uh, came with certain challenges. So you don't think that might be an explanation for what you're talking well, about? That's, there? What I'm, that's what I'm saying. You know, Lando started to realize what he had gotten into, and we do have that leaked audio. He went to the bathroom. He forgot to take off his uh, mic. So this is what he said. This deal is getting worse all the time. 
yeah. But nonetheless, he did he did come back to do the rest of the interview. Yes, yes. Even though he was caught in a hot mic saying that. Uh, but it, yeah, I mean, that is just one more example. Just what a, what an arrogant bastard. And I can't believe it. They don't know anything about Gaza. They know more than you do about Gaza. They know a lot more. Of than course you do. they do. Yeah. I, I can't believe that he's he. I mean, I can because it's Bill Maher and his ego is basically his entire personality. And, and his uh, brand, but, basically. And at this his point. whole brand. Other people are starting to back off. I am I am seeing rabid Zionists. Right now, they're retreating to both sides. Yes, it's a war crime to starve people on both sides. Right. right. They're they're at least retreating to that, but not Bill Maher. No, never. He will never give an inch on that. Um, Angry Cabbage, gas is six dollars a gallon where I am in California. Nothing is in safe walking distance. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So how is it? Every, every time I leave this place, man, I gotta walk in the street. Yeah. That, as a as a New Yorker, I just any time that I can take public transportation, I will. But you know, you gotta yeah, getting there is like playing a game of frogger, and you're the fucking frog. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's tough. It's tough. And, um, and you know, I mean, you talk about something that really eats into your earnings. I mean, $6 an hour, I mean, $6 a gallon for gas, especially like, yeah. let's say you work retail in like Beverly Hills. Let's say you work at a fast food joint in a wealthy area, just like in New York, the people who work in those wealthy areas, they come from very far outside those wealthy areas to be able to work there. They don't, you can't live in, you know, Malibu and work at the Malibu 7 Eleven. You're driving in an hour and that's gas and that's traffic and that's a huge expense right there. So the idea that like $20 an hour is this cushy wage is just absolutely insane. Of course. Uh, folks, 40000 a year. 40000 yeah. a year. That's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, no, of course not. Um, we'll let this uh, scroll play one more time since there was a little bit of lag time there. But you can go to patreon.com front slash do dissidents and become a member and get various perks of supporting the show, including your name up in lights on the show scroll. You also get call in access to our post show Q and A's every Sunday evening, as well as two full length patron exclusive live streams per month that's two bonus streams uh per month that you get access to by signing up patreon.com front slash do dissidents you can also go to do dissidents.substack.com become a paid member or you can join our locals we got over a thousand of you guys over on rumble now if you're over on rumble you can join our locals by clicking that bright red join button underneath the video player and that signs you up for uh, as little as five bucks a month you get all those perks i just mentioned plus you get to live stream our live shows. We're doing two live shows, one at 2 p.m. Uh, and one at 7 p.m. Eastern time on June 9th, live from the Producers Club in New York City. Uh, you will have live stream access to those shows where we'll be fielding chats from the streaming audience live on stage. So please, if you can, uh, it's a huge help. Go to patreon.com front slash do dissidents, do dissidents.substack.com or uh, do dissidents.locals. Dot com. You guys are the backbone of the show. We say that in private and in public because it's true all over, all day long. Thanks for dedicating ample time, says Washington Turtle, to the attempted smears of Matt Taibbi. Good to see him set the record straight against Brianna's sloppy lies. Yeah, Matt Taibbi's going to be joining. Uh, he's on Sabby tonight, and then he's joining us on the Jimmy Dore Show tomorrow at 630. Uh, so that is going to be a fun time. Make sure you tune in for that. Not going to want to miss that one. Yeah, we'll get into we'll get into some of that, um, but I'm I'm more interested in um, you know what 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 he meant with his notes about the Republicans. I want to give him a chance to talk about that, uh, and I want to get into his expertise. You know, you have this going on in Brazil with uh, the Brazil Twitter files, um, and you have uh, the Scottish hate laws. So uh, we'll be we'll be covering a lot of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In addition to this latest tweet that turned into the Brianna segment, there's, into that, there, right. there's a lot of other stuff that uh, we want to get into uh, with him also. Um, all righty. Let's uh, move on down the line here. Stephen Devane, thanks for the five bucks. Have on Dr. Suzanne Trimbath or Dave Lauer to talk about naked short selling and read the D about GME turnaround and naked shorting wealth reversal. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, that that is, I believe, where they 
issue more shares to short than exist. It's supposed to be illegal, but it goes on. Like basically they issue shares that are not issued official shares to short. That's naked shorting. I, if I'm correct, I think that's what that is. Got it. Got it. Uh, all right, let's go here. There is no such thing as unskilled labor. Barbara Ehrenreich, author of Nickel and Dimed, All Labor Requires Skill. Right Thank on. you, Dr. Durkin. Absolutely. Uh, keep in mind, says Anna Jackson, these restaurants don't have us on full-time status, so no health care, no benefits, no overtime, even at $20 per hour. Yeah, I mean, if you're not getting any sort of health care out of that, then obviously uh, that's that's another huge expense. Um Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, well, we were talking about that with Canada yesterday because we were covering an article about how they're, you know, having a lot of problems with housing affordability, which is which is relevant. Uh, but they also don't have certain costs that we have here. Right. Right. Indeed. Uh, Brundle, Dan, thanks for the $20. I like that screen name with the avatar image there. It, ama it amazes me how when it comes to worker pay, the right suddenly forgets everything it's been saying about inflation for the last four years. If minimum wage had been indexed to inflation, it would be well over $20 by this time. Well, that's a good point. Tw tw 2288 as of 2021. Yes. That's the most recent data on that. If, if the minimum wage had kept up with productivity. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That that is a good point, um, and you know that that is certainly um, worth mentioning. How okay? So you're worried about inflation in terms of the cost of consumer goods, but what about jobs keeping up with the inflation that's already right. set in? Right. No. Exactly. No. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it's right. just supposed to all fall on the backs of low wage workers. Yeah. In, in, look, in, look, look at the people telling you that. Think about where their interests lie. That's going to tell you everything, just like you did with pharmaceuticals, just like you did with war. Look at the self-interest of the people telling you that story. Think yes. about it. Indeed. Ara, thanks for the $2. You erase my super chat. I demand reimbursement. Thank you, Ara, <laughs> for letting us know. If you uh, put in a regular chat, uh, we'll see if we can catch it, although today the chat's moving fast. But put in a regular one and star it, and we'll see if we can grab it. If not, I'll, I'll ask Jake to grab it. And I'm just going to say this chat is really an inspiration to me because me and Matt are about two months apart in age, actually. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice. Um, Mr. Fancy Pants, thanks for the nine ninety nine. Minimum wage increases are typically phased in at a slower rate for small businesses. So far from hurting them, they actually benefit from it. That's right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fancy Pants. Um all righty, uh, let's go on to segment number four of the afternoon. Public opinion has turned severely against Israel, uh, down to just 36%, according to the latest major Gallup poll. And that has reflected in the news coverage and in a lot of the rhetoric coming out of uh, people in Washington. Even Nancy Pelosi now says that we should pause uh, arms shipments uh, to Israel after the WCK airstrikes. Uh, you know who is not deterred by this seemingly, though? Benjamin Netanyahu, who says that a date has been set for the Rafa invasion, which is the quote-unquote red line for Joe Biden. According to The Hill, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said a date has been set for the Israeli military's invasion of Rafah, arguing that the invasion of the southern city is essential for victory. Did I misspeak and say Gaza instead of Rafah earlier? I feel like I might have. But anyway, did I meant you? invasion I didn't of Rafah. if you did. Okay. I meant invasion of Rafah, the southernmost city in Gaza, which now is overcrowded with 1.5 million people. Today, I received a detailed report on the talks in Cairo. We are constantly working to achieve our goals. First and foremost, the release of all our hostages and achieving complete victory over Hamas, Netanyahu said in a video message posted to X. So here's that post. We're going to take a look at this video. It's not long. And we, we also have the evite he sent out to the invasion, right? What's that? Mark, he sent out an evite for the invasion, right? Mark I think it's just date. to save the date at this point because we don't know uh, what it is. We don't know right. what the date is. He has not disclosed that. Even to the United States government, uh, Count Morlock uh, over at the State Department there did a press conference where he said, we don't know of a date uh, as, of, as of now. Okay. So for now, he has one, but he's not making it public yet. 
קיבלתי היום דיווח מפורט על השיחות בקהיר. אנחנו פועלים כל הזמן להשגת מטרותינו, ובראשם שחרור כל חטופינו, והשגת ניצחון מוחלט על חמאס. הניצחון הזה מחייב כניסה לרפיח וחיסול גדודי הטרור שם. זה יקרה, יש תאריך. This will happen, there is a date. Wow. Netanyahu last week said Israel plans to enter Rafah with or without U.S. support. His announcement comes as Israel faces increased pressure from Washington and other Western leaders over its military operations in Gaza, which have so far killed 33,200 Palestinians, according to the Associated Press. An Israeli airstrike last week killed six workers with the World Central Kitchen and their Palestinian driver as they were leaving a warehouse in central Gaza. The group has just delivered about 100 tons of food aid and was driving in armored cars labeled with World Central Kitchen logos when the strike hit, of course. Biden issued his sharpest criticism of Netanyahu after the attack, warning U.S. policy on the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza would now be determined by immediate steps Israel needs to take to reduce a, quote, unacceptable humanitarian situation. The conversation marked a notable change from Biden and his team since the war broke out last October. Far-right ministers Idmar Ben-Gavir and Bezalel Smotrich criticized Netanyahu over the IDF scaling back of troops from Gaza. So they did a, a minor pullout after that because they got such bad press. And what did he get? Shit from the people who are even more insane, if you can believe such a person is even possible. Uh, they gave him more shit for it. Ben-Gavir, Israel's national security minister, said if Netanyahu ends Israel's war with Hamas without an attack on Hamas in Rafah, he will, quote, cease to have a mandate to serve as prime minister per the Jerusalem Post. And there you have it. There you have the pickle that Netanyahu finds himself in, which is that he has no choice but to escalate because his country wants him out, right? Uh Smotrich, in a letter Monday, reportedly well, well, ben, called... Ben Gavir is the one who suggested dropping a nuke, right? Isn't that Ben Gavir? I, he was the... It, uh, it's, it's really hard to keep track of the genocidal statements of the Israeli leaders. Yeah, I don't remember if that was him. I is know that the he guy was who called the... them animals, or is that the guy who said, let's drop an <laughs> yeah, atom right. bomb? It was Yov Galant who called them animals. Ben Gavir, I know, talked about the quote, voluntary relocation or the voluntary displacement or something like that. Self-deportation. Um, deportation, yeah, exactly. Smotrich, in a letter Monday, reportedly called on Netanyahu to convene Israel's national security cabinet, which has the power to make policy decisions over the war. The only forum that is authorized to make decisive decisions during wartime is the broad national security cabinet, but unfortunately, this is not how things have worked, and we see decisions being made by the small war cabinet without approval and without updating the broad cabinet under international pressures that harm the war's momentum and our security interests, he said, per the Jerusalem Post. Biden last week also urged the Israeli leader toward a ceasefire deal that would see the release of the remaining hostages in Gaza and a pause in fighting in the war-torn enclave, war -torn enclave, pardon me, the White House said. Uh, talks on a ceasefire deal were progressing in Cairo, Egypt, Monday, that would be yesterday, and both parties have agreed on the basic points, Reuters reported, citing Egypt's al Qahera news state-affiliated TV channel. Well, The Hill couldn't quite keep up with the news because the piece they were citing was this one. As you can see, I highlighted the date, Progress in Gaza Truce Talks in Cairo, um, according to Egyptian TV, that was April 8th, yesterday at 2.18 a.m., wee hours of the morning. But just a simple 13 hours later, Gaza Truce talks, still deadlocked, Netanyahu sets date for offensive, same outlet, 13 hours later. So the Hill there, not that they were inaccurate, but it's hard to keep up with collapsing talks. And so as of now, Netanyahu says he's got a date in mind. Now, listen, we don't know what that date is yet. When we find out what that date is, you're going to want to make sure that you communicate that date to all of your friends who are still towing the Zionist party line. Because that is the date at which they will be revealed for the monsters that they are. So if you want yes. to walk back any of this bullshit that you've been spewing for the past six months, that's your deadline right there. Once that date hits 
and we see the real horror start to unfold, and it sounds crazy saying that because what we've witnessed these past six months has been horrific beyond belief, but if these craven maniacs go through with this, that is going to be the worst of it. And on that date, whoever is still defending Israel is going to have a hard time showing themselves in public without being shamed, nonviolently, of course, but shamed for the rest of their life. Because if he actually does this, you talk about a red line, whether Biden will hold him to any kind of responsibility for it is up in the air. But in the public mind, that will have crossed the red line. We're already past the red line in the public mind. They go through with this. It's a whole new world past that point. Uh, yeah, well, this this really shows you this is very much you have a vassal client state that is turning around and telling the uh, it's it's patron. Yeah, well, fuck you. You need us here anyway. You 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 need us holding off the Visigoths so we can do what we want. Um, and really, you know, you even have Nancy Pelosi. We might cover this tomorrow on the Jimmy Dore show because I, I find this very interesting that all of a sudden Nancy Pelosi, who apparently she was friends, personal friends with the chef at uh, World Kitchens. All of a sudden, now she wants us to stop sending weapons. Yeah. Um, now, because it affected her personally. It affected somebody she knows personally. Um, but when, you, when you've when you lost Nancy Pelosi on sending weapons to Israel, um, it's an open question. When he announces that, that date, do you at this point have enough of the morning Joe goons who are willing to acknowledge that this is a genocide that they actually cut off weapons to Israel in response. It, it would have been unthinkable two months ago, but now it seems like Biden might get pushed into doing that. Uh, it is possible. It is possible. I mean, once Nancy Pelosi's there, and like I said, you know, she's there once it affected her friends. And once this it is affected not, her. That's that not, of course, the story. That's of the course. story. Yes, of course. And that's, of course, not to minimize what happened to those workers. That's horrible. They were of heroes course to put not. themselves in harm's not. way. That's not what I'm saying. No, of course. I'm, that, I'm, that's I'm not saying what either of us horrible saying. things have been happening to people who are not personal friends exactly. of Nancy Pelosi for six months, and she didn't say shit. Exactly. And that's that's the main point. Um, and that, broadly speaking, has been a, a real breaking point throughout the entire media, that it took, you know, six non-Palestinians to be targeted in a drone strike for the media to, I won't say all at once uniformly, but now it seems like a majority of the coverage of this is critical of Israel. Whereas in, you know, the the later days of 2023 into the earlier days of this year, uh, it was the exact opposite to the point where students, those students, those kids that Bill Maher thinks are so uninformed, were getting uh, employment letters rescinded for saying what everybody more or less is saying now. Um, Luis De La Cruz, thanks for the two bucks. I'm an EMT. The company I work for covers operating costs for that specific ambulance with two medical transports, expects us to run eight to 10 transports in a 12 hour shift, pay 17 an hour in balance. Well, yeah, wow. you should be paid more wow. too. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. I mean, we, we, we think of that as a professional class job, but uh, you hear that a lot that EMTs don't make a lot. A lot of them are volunteer. A lot of them don't make anything. Right. Um, right. But yeah, they don't make much. They don't make much. Um, I, I know quite a few EMTs. Um, if there's if there's anybody that you want to be underpaid, it's the people who are sent out to save the lives of you and your loved ones. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Underpaid and probably exhausted from having to work a second job yes, on top of that. Exactly. Right? Um, Handel's Gate, thanks for the donation. This one ran off the screen, so I'll just read it here. In the last couple of years, you have come to realize that you bought into lies on most things, but you still have not reconsidered this. The market will adjust. Dr. Shiva? You can't set labor Is this one of those Dr. Shiva? Like this. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the market will I'm adjust. Sorry. You can't set labor rates uh, like this. I don't know what you mean. You um, can't set oh, you labor can't? rates. Yeah. You can't, but you but you can set uh, you can set rates of buybacks. You can do that, right? right? Right. You can set tax rates to favor wealth. You can do that. You can you can tax um, you can tax uh, personal and 
investment income at a lower rate, a type of income that that really favors wealthy investor class people. But you can't set wages. This is what I'm saying. Stop being a fucking peasant. If you are rich, fair enough. Fair enough. These ideas favor your class. Go build a moat and hope it protects you because the the peasants are going to come one of these days. But if you are not of that class, if you're not rich, you've been brainwashed to think like a peasant. De-peasant your mind. Cool blue. Thanks for the 499. Like Hillary Clinton, I want Bill Maher to never stop speaking. They show us all who the Democratic Party are, and that is necessary. Thank you, cool blue. Uh, Russell, oh, did we Fair not enough. do our cowbell for um, Kenman earlier? We owe Kenman a cowbell, and we owe Isabel a cowbell, too. Look at that, $200. Man, Thank yo. you. That is very kind of you. Very kind of you, indeed. Appreciate that very much. Wow. How would minimum wage increases work across industries? There you go. Thank you, Isabel. Now, if a now fast did you food... make that because they increased your wage? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if a fast food worker makes $20 an hour, then a CNA should make at least 30 If a CNA makes 30 then a nurse should make 40 Right. Then what about doctors? How does this affect health care costs? Do we foresee a domino effect? That is, that is a very common thing that comes up with this, but that's actually part of why you do want wages to go up because it does set a higher standard and it does tend to have a domino effect through the economy. Now, pieces of fucking shit like Jesse Waters, who want uh, working people to live in virtual poverty or literal poverty, are going to pretend that there's this little pool of money and it's just involved in the buying and purchasing of you know, hamburger meat and so on and the labor costs and that that's the whole pool. There's this enormous pool of profit money exactly. here on Wall Street right. and at the corporate level. That money exists. They don't want to give it to you. Right. So this is not a problem. It is a problem insofar as these corporations are going to do everything they can to pass these costs onto the consumer and onto the worker. And then they're going to tell you, like an abused child, you see, it's your own fault. It's right. your own fault that you're that you're being victimized. No, it's not your fault. That is why I advocate for visibility of these buybacks, these corporate profits, and boycotts. You, this is a class war. You have to treat it that way. You're in a war with a wealthy elite that wants you poor, that wants you to settle for less. We did a we did a segment yesterday about how multi-generational homes are coming back, and it was in Vox, and they tried to frame it, all the social benefits of it, and they really did not want to get into you will own nothing and be happy. But that that's really what that is. They want, they want you to live with less and be happy about it. Right, of course. Of and course. they're going to tell you it's climate change. That is one thing we can agree with our conservative friends on. Not that... There is no climate change, but are they manipulating the issue in order to get you to live in a more uh, Spartan way? Yes, they are. Uh, yes. And and that that is key to understanding. I mean, not that part. Not that that's not true. But the idea that um, all of these labor costs have to translate into price increases is not true. You have the it's CEO to worker gap at record highs. It's hundreds of times what right, the average worker right, pays. Right. It used to be 40 times. So there's the money right there. And at right. a certain point, they at the top will have to take less because the market right. will not allow for a $20 filet of fish sandwich. Right. So at a certain point, they're going to have to take less. Right. And you're going to have to force the issue a little bit, not That's back it. down with your tail in, in between your legs every time they try and scare you into saying, well, we're going to raise the prices another quarter and another quarter and another quarter. Right. 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 Uh, abiding. Thanks for the one dollar. Peasant mentality equals establishment Stockholm syndrome. That indeed. is a very good way to put it. You're right. Thank you for that abiding. Uh, very kind of you, my friend. Um, let's see here. Puck nine seven one. Guys, love listening to your views. Thank you. I don't mind watching Bill Maher. He has his moments. I think most people are smart enough to see his BS views, just like I am able to disagree with your BS views. Well, thank you. We have no BS views. <laughs> we have no BS views. We are uh, always right here. No, uh, uh, look, you know, Bill Maher, it's at this point, we, we used to do 
occasional positive segments on Bill Maher. But at this point, he and he always had some shit takes. At this point, back then it was like maybe 60-40. Now it's like 80% shit takes. Maybe 90%. There's very little he says that's worth. It, the juice ain't worth the squeeze anymore with him. Yeah, I would say so. Um, Era Hell here. I'll skip the line since we deleted yours. My deleted super chat was anyone with a D next to their name and a pulse could have won in your district, Russ. ALC, check both of those boxes. I still demand reimbursement. Well, she's not his district, to be clear. He left his district to campaign uh, for her. No, but she won against Joe Crowley, the primary. Well, well the but point. she won against a very entrenched, old yeah. school Tammany Hall style incumbent. You have no idea how corrupt that district is. You know how corrupt that district is? The county chairman's seat there, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the office I'm thinking of. Everybody wants that seat because when people die intestate, you get 20% of the estate if you hold that position. That is some old school New York Tammany Hall bullshit. That's who Joe Crowley was. So it, was, it wasn't like she, she won against a Republican. She, she unseated it was it was like unseating James Clyburn. I mean, not to that extreme, but it was more of that character. Right, right, exactly. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Um, Angry Cabbage. To be honest, last time I was shocked and disgusted about fast food price increases, I was also shocked and disgusted by how often I was buying it at all. <laughs> My health is better off with fewer purchases. Yes, yeah, so you, so you folks, you might have a misimpression because whenever I come out to L.A., I, I, I always highlight my In-N-Out Burger adventure. I cook almost all my own food. And when, and if I do eat out, it's almost never fast food. But I have a weakness for In-N-Out Burger when I'm here. Yeah, Jack in a Box is, is my thing there. Um, Joy but a fuck face. Uh, hey, guys, speaking of deprogramming, I'm wondering if you caught Steve Bannon on Russell Brand yesterday. He used the phrase end stage capitalism on more than one occasion. He may be a dissident fan. Oh, yeah. Well, he he is uh, he's uh, the number one uh, funder of our show, Steve Bannon. This is a, this is a Steve Bannon. Uh, op this is a, where where yeah. Steve Bannon cut out operation. Yeah. We got that term from him. Actually. Yes. Yeah, he gave that to us. Yes. To to get that money, we had to spend seven days in a sweat lodge with Steve Bannon. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Hristo Spillmar is living in the metaverse. Guys, give him a break. All this is new to him. Thank you, Hristos. Appreciate that. Um, okay. All right. Wor uh, worst Marvel movie ever. Worst Marvel movie ever. Bill Maher into the mouth of madness. That's right. That's right. Um, all right, I want to do this one next. I don't feel like reading more, and uh, we're not going to get to everything, but that's okay. We have a full week. Um, so I want to go to a piece by Caitlin Johnstone uh, because uh, we have seen public sentiment turn against Israel in recent days here, accelerated, of course, uh, in huge part by the WCK airstrike. And she put out a short little piece that's here uh, read for us uh, on this nice little video audio presentation that she posted on her X account. Uh, basically, it's a version of what I tweeted out. No Israel amnesty. Don't let people forget about what they said during the first six months of this genocide. And don't let people pin this all on Netanyahu or blame it on a few bad apples. Uh, and uh, this is a great Which piece. I'm already, I'm already seeing it. I'm already seeing it. All these people trying to pretend this is a Netanyahu problem. Yeah, just a Netanyahu problem. That's right. So here is Caitlin Johnston's article. Support for Gaza goes mainstream. Don't let the empire co-opt the movement. Opposition to the slaughter in Gaza appears to be getting more mainstream, which is obviously great. But when political impulses go mainstream, it means there's going to be a massive and concerted effort to funnel public sentiment in a direction that doesn't damage the interests of the empire. They're going to try to blame this all on Netanyahu. They're going to insist that Israel itself is fine, and the only thing that went wrong was a fluke incident in which an aberrational right-wing faction briefly got into power. They're going to try to wash the Western Empire's hands of the mass atrocities it directly facilitated in Gaza. They're going to try to frame Biden as a basically decent politician who found himself trapped in an impossible situation. They're going to keep pretending a two-state solution is right around the corner 
and doing everything they can to stall out meaningful change in Palestinian rights while blaming any obstacles to peace on the Palestinian resistance. They're going to pollute the information ecosystem with a deluge of messaging which is all designed to counter the notion that Gaza means the entire status quo needs to be overhauled with regard to Israel-Palestine, with regard to U.S. foreign policy, with regard to the U.S. government itself, and with regard to the Western power structure in general. They're going to say everything they need to say to ensure that everyone understands that the basic status quo in Israel, the United States, and the Western world is working perfectly fine. And this was all just an innocent little oopsie poopsie caused by a few bad apples. They'll justify, they'll excuse, they'll exonerate, and then they'll distract, moving public attention on to the next big thing and allowing the amnesia of the daily news churn to wash Gaza from our attention all while pretending to be on our side. This messaging will need to be fought tooth and claw. We cannot allow them to neuter this political moment with spin and propaganda. We need to make sure their criminality remains front and center of public awareness, and we need to push for the real revolutionary changes that Gaza plainly proves are needed. Let mainstream sentiment turn against the current Israeli regime and bring an end to the butchery in Gaza. But don't let the imperial narrative managers co-opt anything. Don't let them hijack the zeitgeist that's been building. View all words and actions of the Western political media class with aggressive skepticism. And push back forcefully every time they try to push public sentiment in a direction that advantages the empire. Beautifully said, as always, as by always. Caitlin yeah. Johnston. Now, one example of this that may be hiding in plain sight that our friends at RBN called out immediately was the attempted co-opting of this uncommitted campaign as the primaries roll on. Because don't forget, the uncommitted movement started as the abandoned Biden movement from Muslim and, uh, Muslim and Arab leaders in Michigan and other swing states as a full-on abandonment of the Democratic ticket, not just for the primaries, but for the general as well. Then what happened? Then we started seeing Rashida Tlaib and Michael Moore, right, uh, come in and say, well, yeah, vote uncommitted in the primary. But of course, we all got to be there to beat Trump yes, in November. That's an example of, of co-opting this energy in a way yeah. that ultimately serves the empire because they want you to be able to express yourself, get it off your chest that you're furious about Gaza, but still be there for Joe Biden when it really counts. That's one of many examples uh, of what not to we fall We showed for. them. Yes, exactly. Yeah, one of many examples of what not to fall for. And on the media side of things, and even in conversations with your friends in person or on social media, wherever you have conversations like this, yeah, do not let them pin this all on one man, Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu is not even, as that last segment showed, he's not even necessarily the most powerful person in this thing because he has people chirping in his right. ear saying right. you better see this through to the end or else we are going to basically remove you from power right so don't let it become about the personalities oh who's to blame who's to blame you know who's to blame really the whole world is to blame for this the whole world has failed gaza for decades now and so that's what i'm talking about we're talking about revolutionary change and a revolutionary moment it falls to everybody to see that justice is done for this massacre that Israel is sanctioned, they become a pariah state, that they are, uh, they have ambassadors expelled from different countries. Uh, that's what we, this has to be a global movement to get justice for what has happened, not just in the past six months, but for the past 75 years. Well, yeah, and the entire attempt to deflect to Netanyahu, you always need to redirect to, hang on, I thought this was the only democracy in the Middle East. Right. So don't the Israeli people have aren't they responsible for Netanyahu? He's not he, he's not a he's not a dictator. He didn't get get there in a coup. You're not suggesting that. Right. So didn't the Israeli people sign off on this by putting him in power? Not just not just he's not like Trump, who who's who you could argue was a political aberration, at least the first time who came completely out of nowhere. He's around for 20 years. The Israeli people didn't like what Netanyahu is about. They've had ample opportunity to end his political career. The fact that they've continuously elevated him says something about Israeli society. 
the fact that you have settlers blocking aid and serving popcorn as they do it says something about what a sick society this is. Um, Netanyahu is not um, an aberration. He's he's a natural outcome of a Zionist political project that was always conceived as an ethno state. On the premise, ironically, as Alan Pape has pointed out, most Israelis don't believe in God, but they all believe he gave them Palestine. It's it's a biblical claim from somebody like Bill Maher. There's actually another clip that's been going around where he talks about the Bible, <laughs> the man who made religious. He talks about this having been the seat of King David's kingdom, and that's why Jews belong there. Yeah, and what about us? What does it say about our society that all of our leaders have signed off on Israel going back all of these decades? What does it say about the progressive movement that we had Bernie Sanders spearheading our little subsection of the American left for a period of time when it took him way too long to call for suspension of aid? And I still haven't heard him call for a permanent ceasefire. So what does that say about us? Like I said, this is this is the world's failing. Right. This right. is the world's failing. And no one is off the hook for their complicity in this, including us, including me, who had a podcast for a few years before I gave this issue the airtime right. that it should right. have gotten. So right. I don't let anybody, including myself, off the hook sure. for this. And none of us should. Sure. None of us should. But that's the kind of moment that this <laughs> is. And when you buy into narratives about who is to blame inside Israel, or even if you just say this is a problem of Israel and Israel alone, it's really not. The reason there are aircraft carrier is because we feel we need an aircraft carrier in that region. Right. So, and the only is, reason for that is because there's oil there. Exactly. Right. And so this kind of moment has the potential to raise that kind of consciousness and don't let it be redirected don't let it be contained and don't let it be co-opted so that was beautifully said by caitlin johnson as always um all righty let's go to some more uh rumble rants here uh and then we got another segment that we will uh do today let's end on the eclipse uh and i'll do the hollywood letter with I, I would i would say tomorrow. so yeah. let's do the eclipse absolutely let, let, uh, let's let's end on a fun one they Ravid Laz, can you please bless us with your PBD impression again? Well, you think I'm here to do impressions for you? That's all I could do is an impression of Patrick Bet David. You're gonna have to pay me more than uh one dollar an hour to do another Patrick David impression. I'll do this one for one dollar, but next time you're gonna have to make it uh, at least five dollars for the next one. Well, there we you go. we we did a sketch. We did the Elvis is Jewish sketch. Yes, yes. We should do skits with Jimmy Dore with your impressions. Yeah. Hey, we were going to pitch uh, him a, a Norm sketch, weren't we? Were we? I think we were. We forgot. Mar is the male Ellen DeGeneres, says Raven Laz. Thank you. Uh, D. Wortham. Yes, Sunday, you both seem to downvalue seeing the eclipse. I did. That's true. Guilty as charged. I did do that. Yeah. I mean, I saw, I saw the last one, which was like a big deal because it was like unusually long. Yeah. I mean, it was cool to see. In my defense, know. yeah. I mean, it didn't get totally dark here. It, I was a little underwhelmed by it, but it was cool. It was fun. I mean, I think me and Keaton are a little alike this way. Like, let me ask you something. Sure. Do you care about fireworks? Uh, do I care about fireworks? No. Like, are you like, like, for me, when someone's like, let's go see fireworks, I'm like, fuck, I want to go see fireworks. Oh, yeah, no, I was never really, like, into it, because especially yeah. when you have to go see fireworks in the suburbs, which you didn't grow up in the suburbs, but when you grow up in the suburbs, going to see fireworks means you sit in traffic for an hour after the fireworks are done waiting to get the oh, hell out of there. Right. And it's just not too. worth it. The juice is right. just not worth yeah. the squeeze. I, I yeah. think we're a little alike this way, like we're unimpressed by things like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, uh, for sure. Um. Yassine Miller, Keaton, why don't you guys add the membership gift option on this platform so people can help others become members of your show? Hmm. I should. I have to figure out how. How do you do that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's technical illiteracy. Yeah, that's why. Yes, why don't we? Because we're technically illiterate. That's why. Uh, thank you, Yassine. We, we, we should ask. We should put Jake on that. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a easy fix in YouTube Studio. Zabina Ali became a member. Thank you, Zabina. Thank appreciate you. that very thank much. You. Uh, okay, let's go here. Bill Maher, you're such a fantastic moron. Yes, 
We should have hit that sound drop. I forgot all about that. You're such a fantastic moron. Yeah. (laughs) Could have hit that one. Missed opportunity there. We have so many. You know, I think our sound, we have to do a soundboard purge. You know, I did a little purge the other day. Yeah. The ones that are left now are all ones that we use. Like, I didn't, yeah. Right, Wait, because I if mean, there's I, too I, much on there, then, I know, yeah, yeah, like I got rid of the stuff from the Elvis bit because it was like a one-time bit. I right. went through. Come on, that rich girl sound drop, that's definitely going to come up again. Yeah, the violin definitely. is good. We need that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, see, I like I got rid of all the ones that are unused. Yeah. Christos, thanks for the $5. Has anyone noticed that Israel has been mentioning Iran from the very beginning of this conflict? Well, there's, yeah, I mean, we've done well, a bunch of segments. Has anyone noticed uh, America's been mentioning Iran since George W. Bush became president. Yeah, yeah, they've been they've been promising us that war for a long time now, uh, indeed. Um, okay, open message to all dissidents from SB. Thank you, SB. Save statements of support of Israel that mocked Aaron Bushnell. It will help Palestinians when the lawsuits come. Oh yeah, that's what we're also doing uh, tomorrow with Kit. Uh, Nicaragua has taken Germany to the ICJ, and that hearing is underway. So we'll be covering that tomorrow uh, as well. Um, okay. Yes, this is, this is, see, that's, that's, that's the way to think, China Shill. Just because you're underpaid for your EMT job doesn't mean everyone else should make less. It means you should also be paid more. Exactly. Ah, uh, look, man, we've reconciled. We've reconciled. We are all <laughs> Chinese now. <laughs> Russ, we are all China Shills now. Uh, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Um, uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, AJMQL1 breaking at 2 p.m. We're calling on all New Yorkers to flood Wall Street for Gaza on tax day, calling all community organizations, oh. mosques, churches, businesses, and workers to go. There you go. Tax day, Wall Street, uh, protest you know for Gaza. I, New York I will City. be back in town. I'll cover that if it's a thing. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. That would be, uh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, we don't have a show that day, right? That's Monday. Yeah, yeah, that's Monday. That's Monday. Um, okay, uh, Robot Leg, thanks for the $5. Some of these are too long, so I'm just going to read these and not put them on the screen because some of these won't fit. Most pushback on national minimum wage is to protect small business and small markets. I give zero shits about billion-dollar corporations, a fuck them, but family-owned restaurants in rural Alabama can't that, swing. That's not who that wage Hold on one second. Let me just read the rest uh, of the I'm thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're it's okay. But family-owned restaurant in rural Alabama can't swing $15 an hour dishwasher go ahead yeah um that the minimum wage the way it was instituted in california it was very targeted it only applied to restaurants that had at least 40 restaurants in the state it was not so that's just a red herring that this got imposed on the mom and pop diner i agree with you that you can't impose a minimum wage that you need in california on a rural state with a completely different economy. Sure. Um, I do agree with that. But should the federal minimum wage be seven twenty five? Of course it shouldn't. And maybe you should have different wage tiers for independent businesses and large corporations. Maybe you should have two different minimum wages for those classes. They have something like that in Australia. In now, Australia, the problem it's with not that the is same that... minimum wage for everybody. Right. Now, the one problem with that that I do buy is that that puts some of the smaller businesses at a disadvantage because In terms the better of the laborers competition for labor, yeah. they go to the places that pay more. I sure. think the answer is to phase everything in. That's why in California, it's only for large chain restaurants now, because you right. have to give the market time to regulate. If you shock the system too much by giving by doing a blanket wage increase all at once, right. that will throw the market out of whack. Once the market regulates, then you can bring the smaller businesses up to that level over time right. and that's the way i think it has to work um but thank you for that that was uh, a that's good something one. De- definitely worth discussing the problem is when you start discussing this on a level which you're not doing but some people discuss it on a level that is just complete corporate elite wealthy brainwashing where they're not even talking about practical solutions for things like what you're bringing up they're categorically against raising wages for workers and exoriate them for even asking that that's what we're really addressing right indeed um all right uh agmq says fbi showed up at the door of a muslim american woman in oklahoma for her opinions online about israel's war fbi facebook inquiry prompts concerns about free speech reported by al jazeera i'll check that out i saw a video but i would like to see a reporting on that 
to make sure that that's for real, and then we'll absolutely cover it. But so thank you for that. Uh, letting me know that's on Al Jazeera. Anna Jackson, if I work multiple part-time gig jobs for more than 40 hours, am I not entitled to be overtime and health benefits? If not, shouldn't I be? Uh, yeah, well, th well, this is also why you need working class solidarity, because you need, at some point, you're going to need Medicare for all. You're going to need to have a universal health care system, because when you talk about international labor struggles, which are very important, they don't have that problem. The health care is at least taken care of. So they don't have right. to worry about, are right. they going to slash right. my hours so I lose my health insurance? You exactly. don't have to worry about that in a sane society, right? right. Uh, thank you, Anne. I appreciate well, that. Well, well, and, well, and also, I mean, one of the most obvious points people always make in regards to Medicare for all is look at the burden that would take off businesses. That money could go into wages, right? right. They, they no longer have to worry about providing health insurance for their employees. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Patrick Donahue, the squad's politics are as weak and diluted as the drinks AOC served back in the day. <laughs> They're weak ass crap going uncommitted now, but commit later is BS. Well, yeah, that's obviously nonsense. And that's that's what we what we're talking about. That that Absolutely. place is still there. I always forget the name of it. It's right off Union Square. It's like yeah, Taco Taco is. Flats. Is it Taco Flats? You're thinking of Tortilla Flats, which yeah, is in the West not, Village. Yeah, this but is it's, some it's other a place. very similar name. It's a very yeah. similar name to that. It's in Flatiron. Yeah, it's right near Union Square. I forget exactly where. Um, it's like 16th Street or something like that, like right off of Union yeah, Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's okay. next to like Bread's Bakery. Right. Yeah. Yep. Very close to there. Um, all righty. Let's uh, go to a few more uh, of these uh, rants and chats before our final segment. Old Stoner. Thank you, Keaton. You just scored my respect. You're the first person to say I'm to blame, too. What do you mean I just scored your respect? You, you've you been watching us for a long time. I haven't scored your I, respect I mean, you're the, you're the pro-incest commentator. <laughs> yeah, so. but I'm not pro. Don't you say know, pro. That was yeah. a lot to, to <laughs> yeah, overcome. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Keaton. Uh, you just scored my respect. Well, uh, no, th I'm just teasing you, old stoner. But thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and it, it's true. I mean, I do feel a sense of guilt for not having sure. Sure. paid more mind to this uh, for so long. Um AJMQ says, did you see Colbert's interview with AOC about Russia? Delusional. Also, he's given the green light uh, to mention 10-7 WCK and that genocide is an electric term. Could be a segment on the Jimmy Dore show. Uh, we'll have to look into that. I'm not sure. I haven't seen that. I know the Colbert uh, show is brutal about copyright. That's why he never gets covered on these YouTube shows. But maybe we could do it on that the Rebel why, side. Because you would see Colbert all the time. All he the says time. something he's completely the worst moronic one. every night. <laughs> yeah, he's the worst one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The only, um, th the only thing I see, because it's a short enough clip, a lot of people use him doing that, that vaccine dance number. A lot of people will use that clip. Sometimes you see that. But like the interviews, the long form stuff. But it's you under never... five. So right. You can right. get away with it. You can get away with that. Era Hill, uh, thanks for the $1. Oil is not needed in Israel. War is more profitable than oil alone. That is true. Israel must exist for the war machine to grind on. I agree with that. And Luis Dela Cruz says, China Shill, I'm on your side. There you go, China Shill. You have an ally over on Rumble. Uh, okay. Let's do our final segment of the day. Uh, we will be back here on this program tomorrow at 2 o'clock on Rumble exclusively with our friend Kit Cabello. He'll be co-hosting with me, and then I'll be remote co-hosting with Russell on the Jimmy Dore Show at 6 o'clock. So tomorrow we got a bit of a doubleheader of sorts, but this program, Due Dissidents, is a Rumble exclusive tomorrow. So make sure you go subscribe to our Rumble channel so that you don't miss that. That is going to be uh, quite the show. we got a lot of fun stuff uh, for tomorrow. So final segment of the day, folks. Uh, as you know, uh, what was it? Yesterday, Monday, we had a solar eclipse where, let's see if I remember this right, the moon passes between the Earth and the sun and creates a shadow, um, and, uh, you know, it gets dark out. There are some places darker than others, and this was a yeah, major some, event. Yeah, some, some shit like that. Something like that. A lot of people cared, like a lot of, cared a lot about it, right? Uh, it was very important to, to some of you guys. So anyway, uh, in addition to that, New York had an earthquake uh, last week, and yes. in addition to that, the cicadas, sorry, the cicadas, cicadas yeah. are due to come out. And so uh, 
The View was putting the pieces together as to what could be to blame for all this. So here is The View with Sonny Hostin giving quite the explanation online that the earthquake epicenter was actually at Bedminster in New Jersey. Right. Yes. Fun fact. I, so it originated with Trump. I have to say. Yeah, Trump was probably fucking Lizzo yeah. in, <laughs> at Bedminster. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the cause of it right there. Mystery <laughs> solved. I know, right? I mean, I have to say, um, Karen Dupich, our, our wonderful, oh my our wonderful makeup artist, moments. when the earthquake was happening, yeah. she put her coat on and she was like, Jesus is coming. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. We've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. The and rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. And then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although I love the first time in cicadas, like a no, no, hundred no, years. No, 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 no. Two That's, different. No, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. There's two, two different there's times. There's two different kinds of cicadas. Two different times times are coming. The good cicadas and the bad cicadas. But for the first time in in May. She knows. Look at Whoopi's very informed on what kind of cicadas are coming. If only she were this informed about like what she's paid to be informed about, about, they might have a show. Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe, 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 maybe they need to move her to Animal Planet to cover the natural world. Yeah, and yeah. she's going to come off a lot better than she does on this show. That's right. Um, I, I got to say, between this and, and the Brie Taibbi interview, the idea that lawyers are smart by definition is getting a serious challenge. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Many, many years. No, seven, so, every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> Maybe well, you know better. I, where did you read listen, it? I, I am not where did you read it? In she lies. Yeah. I mean, we saw this in the Coleman Hughes thing. She lies. Yeah. Sonny Austin just makes shit up, and 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 she, you know, she carries herself with an air of authority. So no, no, that's that's misrepresenting what Robin D'Angelo said. No, it isn't. He right. didn't. He didn't misrepresent that. Right. Oh, it's not what I read. So where did honestly? No, I mean, stop for a second. It's trivial, but look at it. Where did she read something? contrary to the science where did where did you read that is that are, are you imbibing dangerous misinformation somewhere you better call the fbi no she probably just it. said oh well i read something different yeah it was just, it was just but she didn't yeah she didn't she's lying she's trying to save face yeah say all those all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that you know either climate change exists that's more or something point. is really or going going returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It can't. It, it, it <laughs> happens, <laughs> and, and the, the, the eclipse. They've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen, and they actually uh, uh, like like look what's happening here. You are being intellectually outclassed by Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar. <laughs> yeah, that, eclipses. That, the uh, the eclipse is in outer space. How could that have anything to do with climate change? What what Joy Behar says is true. Earthquakes, they're underground, and the eclipse is in outer space. It's well, an event course. where the orbits cross paths. What could that possibly have to do with climate change? Uh, uh, and as Whoopi, who apparently is an expert on this topic, who knew, uh, who she knew? has it ready to go. The cicadas like come out every this 17 is, years. Yeah, this is Whoopi's idiot savant moment. Maybe she picked this up from being on the set of Star Trek for so many years. Yeah, who knows? She picked who up knows? a little science -y stuff. She's really up on that. Let me just play this one more time. In a way. Say all those, all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change exists. That's more or the something point. is Climate change. It's in outer space. It's the orbit of the moon and the Earth's orbit around the sun having, happening to As collide. As we have always known. Once every 50 years. What do you mean? It's, it's climate change. Climate change. Climate change. I could see. I mean, earthquakes is kind of ridiculous, too, since the tectonic plates are pretty far down there. It's not. I mean, as Joy Behar says, we think of climate change as being up here. It's atmospheric. Right. It's not under the ground. But the eclipse, I mean, you're talking about the sun is 93 million miles away. <laughs> yeah, like how do you how do you put those things together? Oh, that's funny. That's funny. We're glad that she said this, though, because it gave us a way to cover the eclipse topic uh, in a, in a, without in having way to totally nerd out about it. Right, exactly. I, 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 okay, okay. Honestly, if you, if, you, if you talk, if you opinionate multiple times a week, You'll have an occasional brain fart where you say some stupid shit. Like it, like it does happen. Oh yeah. But the solution is you say, "Yeah, man. I mean, this is like my fifth show this week. I wasn't thinking, right? Like, what's so hard? Right. You know, oh, I read somewhere. No, you fucking didn't. Shut up. <laughs>
I read somewhere. I yeah. read somewhere. Well, also on the view, the thing that's easy about the view is if you're having an off day, you got a panel of like five or six people there. It's not like us where we have to volley back and right. forth. If one of us is off, the other one can't just not talk, right? The other one has to throw back. You got five people. Just just sit there. I mean, there has to be some person there we didn't really hear from, right? Well, I, the whole I think panel is there. Well, I think between that and the Coleman Hughes thing, what you're seeing is she's another one who has a greatly inflated sense of her intellectual acuity, um, who, I mean, now have, it's obviously I'm not a regular watcher of this, but now having watched some clips, it seems to be that's her deal. You know, she sees herself as the smart one, and there is no smart one on that show by definition. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to read this. This meme has been floating around for a while. I, well, look I at the blonde it. lady in the blue. I don't know what her name is. Second from the left. Yeah. She just didn't say much. She right? does. She does. I mean, the clips I've seen, she doesn't say much. Right, so you don't talk much. So there's an idea. Like if you're going to say something like the eclipse and the earthquake happening within a week of each other is evidence of climate change. You can just not say anything. You got four co-hosts there. They'll, they'll pick up the ball. Dr. Jill Biden, she's a wonderful doctor. <laughs> <It's> a wonderful doctor. <laughs> All right, so this has been floating around for a while. The, the account that first posted this, I believe, is official to MoCo. Hey, what if the view was a panel consisting of a scientist, a fast food worker, a construction worker, and a doctor, instead of a rich lady, a rich lady, a rich lady, and a rich lady? Yeah, exactly. The view would actually be fucking interesting if that were the panel. It would. You had this, these women from very different walks of life talking about politics. That would actually be a good show. I would actually watch that. I Honestly, when I saw this meme again the other day, I said, you know, man, down the line, we should try to create that show. We should try to get <laughs> like four interesting women to do like a, a, a panel show. Yeah, that would like, be like something. we'll call it the 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 other view, the other view. Right. The other view. A, an, a differing view, an opposing view, something like that. Yeah, there you go. I like it. I dig that. Uh, Sparky, Bree said on some podcast, I can't recall which one, she failed as a lawyer, it, and that's it, why it she hired on long. with Bernie. What's that? It held out that long. Um, she failed as a lawyer. Yeah, she was like a corporate lawyer, right? She was doing corporate Yeah, litigation. she was doing big money law. So it's no wonder she fails when she goes into lawyer mode. Yeah, I've, I've not heard that. I'm assuming Maybe. you are. I'm assuming that's accurate, Sparky. Um, your message should be international, not just the U.S. It is. Thanks, sure. R. And yeah. thank you for the uh, eight euro and those combined. I mean, we, we could there. definitely do better. I think we have we have gotten a lot better um, over the last six months, really, since October 7th. Because getting into that kind of led us to be more international in general. We also have such a big international audience. London is our second biggest yeah. city. Yeah, that's right. Indeed. Uh, Nocturnal Human says, I used to ride my bike down the middle of the street in Los Angeles in the early 2000s before it got really fucked up. Thank you, Nocturnal Human. Luis De La Cruz, thanks for the two bucks. Minimum wage should be 22 an hour. Workers unite. Thanks for giving this topic so much attention. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, cover U.S.-backed Ecuador government uh, storming the Mexican embassy. This is an important story. Check Stella Assange Twitter. Uh, AMLO is a true champion to the left, what Bernie could never be. Yeah, maybe we will we'll cover that uh, tomorrow on the Jimmy Show. I didn't know if we were going to put that in for yesterday, yeah, but gotta, maybe we could do it tomorrow. Yeah, when we when we get off, I'm going to start to look at what we're covering. Cool. Uh, 007 Angelo says, the real sign of the apocalypse is that the view is still on the air. Great show, gents. Great take on the wealth gap. Real problem equals greedy fucks. Thank you, 007 Angelo. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Basil Beshkoff, thanks for the 10 bucks. Make America ours again. Thank yes. you, Basil or Basil, however you pronounce it. All righty, folks, that's our show. We thank you all very much for being here. Uh, once again, uh, we invite you uh, to join us in New York City, June 9th, at the Producers Club for tickets. That's dodissidents.com front slash day show or dodissidents.com front slash night show. That gets you tickets to the 7 o'clock performance uh those tickets are moving we moved a couple more uh during the course of this stream so that's encouraging to see but we've got about a little less than 20 seats left i think for the night show and a little more than 20 seats left for the day show so they are moving we are anticipating a full house at each one so make sure you get those sooner than later don't want you to miss 
out. Uh, thank you guys very much for $2 being $2 here. Today. There you go. Uh, thank you all so much for being here today. Gavin Hillick, we can call it the views if there's more than <laughs> one. There you go. Nice. Um, all right, Russell, that's all we got for today, is it not? I believe it is. Beautiful. Folks, thank you very much for being here. I will be live on Rumble with our friend Kit Cabello tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Rumble only. So go to, if you're watching on YouTube right now, make sure you're uh, following us over on Rumble. Rumble.com front slash do dissidents. And make sure you join our Substack. When you join our Substack, even if you join for free, that's a newsletter. So we will let you know when and where we're going live. So in the case we're doing a Rumble exclusive stream, you will know about it hours in advance if you join our newsletter over on Substack. I'll be remote guest hosting with Russell is in the host chair, in the big chair tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern on the Jimmy Dore Show. And then we have Matt Ho here, 9 a.m. Thursday. Remember, that 9 a.m. show is slightly abridged. Uh, it's about a, that's going to be a 90 minute, uh, job. So, uh, we're going to start right on time at 9 AM. So, uh, be here a little bit early for that. If you want to groove out to our musical countdown, thank you guys very much for being here today. We appreciate you all. We will see you tomorrow, double header tomorrow on rumble and on the Jimmy show. Thank you for being here today until tomorrow. Be safe and be well. Courage. Please clap.